my name is Obi and today I'm going to show you how to make one of our men's most celebrated dishes and that is our many shawa. Whole cuts of lamb marinated in fragrant and hot spices, then slow roasted until fall off the bone tender. It's a unique example of Indian and Arabian fusion that I'm certain you'll love. Now let's get started. Before we begin, it's worth noting that this dish isn't the fastest thing to make. It doesn't require much active time, but there is a lot of waiting between steps, so it's best kept for special occasions like Eid or Christmas. To do this the traditional way, you'd let the marinade ferment for a few days, coat the meat in it for a while longer, then cook this for about 24 hours. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll marinate it overnight, then cook it for 6 hours, which will still produce a spoon tender lamb leg that is worthy of any celebratory feast. The upside of this is that you really don't need to babysit the shawa at all, and you can put together this slow cooked masterpiece in less than half an hour of active time. The first thing you need to make is an intense spice rub that Armenis called Tabzira Chua, which basically means shawa marinade. It's made by blending together a load of spices with some garlic and vinegar, then the marinade is left to ferment for a few days so the flavours can develop. To kick off the marinade, we'll begin by toasting some whole spices. And I think it's particularly important to use whole spices here because their flavour is a lot more potent than the pre-ground stuff. If you're interested in learning why this is, check out my friend Ethan's video where he explains why ground spices lose their flavour. If you don't want to buy a load of whole spices, make sure that the spices you are using still have their aroma. The basic tabzida recipe is equal parts of cumin seeds, coriander seeds, garlic and chilli flakes. Each tribe in Amen put their own twists on it by adding other spices such as cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, turmeric and lumi. If you don't know what lumi is, it's basically sun-dried limes which add a deep zesty and tangy flavour to foods unlike anything you've ever tried. We've used the black ones on the channel a few times before but today we'll use these white ones which have a slightly milder flavour. So for my recipe I've decided to use lumi and cardamom alongside the cumin, coriander, black pepper and chilli flakes. First up we need to toast the whole spices. So into a cold pan I added 50 grams of coriander seeds, 50 grams of cumin, 25 grams of black pepper and 10 cardamom pods. I turned the heat up to medium and toasted these for about 4 to 5 minutes until I could really smell their aromas. If you're using ground spices, toast them for 2 to 3 minutes and be aware that they can burn easily. Once your spices seem really aromatic, pour them out into a bowl or plate and allow them to cool for a few minutes before you grind them. To do that, I'm using this small coffee and spice grinder, but you can definitely do it with a pestle and mortar as well. In batches, pulse all of the spices until you are left with a pretty fine powder like this. For the lumi, you'll actually need to smash it before grinding, otherwise it will just keep rolling around in your grinder. When you're done, you should have a pile like this, which will be perfect for the marinade. In a food processor or blender, add in 50 grams of garlic and to liquidise this, I'm also adding in a splash of date vinegar before blending them together. The original Armeni recipe calls for date vinegar, which is usually made at home from fresh dates. It is however really hard to find, so I'd actually recommend using a 50-50 mix of apple cider and malt vinegar in its place. In total, you'll need 250 millilitres of vinegar for this recipe, so keep adding it in until the garlic is well minced. Add in any remaining vinegar, then pour in your ground spice mixture. Now add in 50 grams of hot chilli flakes, which you can cut in half if you want this less spicy. Next comes the salt, and this was 25 grams of salt, which is the perfect amount for a 2.5 kilogram cut of meat. Finally, I'm adding in 200 grams of tamarind pulp, which is optional, but it will give the shawa a delicious tangy flavour. To get this, I took 150 grams of tamarind and soaked it in 300 grams of boiling water for half an hour before straining it. Now all you need to do is blend all of these ingredients together until you are left with a thick paste that looks like this. It's the perfect amount for a 2.5 kilogram joint of meat, so consider doubling it for a larger piece. Now if you want to be ultra traditional, you'd let the marinade ferment for 3 to 4 days before using it. I was short on time so I used it right away and the result was still fantastic. In terms of meat, I'm using a 2.5 kilogram lamb shoulder, though you'd usually see this made with an entire lamb. I went with this over a lamb leg because they tend to be juicier and we'll be slow cooking this for 6 hours. I've also seen shawa made with chicken but haven't seen any beef shawa, so I'm not sure how authentic that would be. Finally, unlike my other lamb leg recipe, I'm going to leave all the fat on this lamb shoulder so it can stay moist during its slow roast. 
Now you want to coat the entire shoulder in the marinade, and I recommend doing this in a baking dish otherwise it can get really messy. Make sure to press the marinade into every part of the lamb, and build up a thick layer so your lamb looks like this. This now needs to rest overnight, so the marinade can really work its way into the meat. Cover this and store it in your fridge, and I had to transfer mine to a Ziploc bag because my fridge is absolutely tiny. The next day I started by preparing some banana leaves. You don't have to get these for the recipe, but if you can they both perfume the meat and protect it while roasting. To prepare them just give them a quick wash on both sides, then dry them off using some paper towels. I'm also going to be using some grease proof paper, which you can just use more layers of instead of the banana leaves. I cut off 3 2 meter sections of paper, then took each one and scratched it up like this. Fill a bowl with water then add your scrunched up paper into the bowl and let this sit for about 10 to 20 seconds. This makes the paper really flexible and allows you to shape it any way you want. Now I've laid 2 banana leaves on my cutting board in a cross shape. Take your meat out of the bag and place it directly on the topmost leaf. Fold the leaf over the meat so that it's covered on both sides, then fold the second leaf as well so that it's enveloped like a parcel in the banana leaves. I added a third banana leaf, then roughly tied it with some butcher's twine to hold it all together. Take your softened grease proof paper and place the bundle of leaves in the centre of it and then wrap the paper around the leaves. Do this a couple more times rotating the bundle each time and you'll basically have wrapped the lamb leg in 6 layers of protective wrapping. This will both trap in the steam and also prevent the lamb from burning when cooking. In the end this will end up looking like a pillow and the last thing you'll do is place it in a baking dish. The traditional way of cooking this is really interesting. You dig a deep hole in the ground and make a fire using wood or charcoal. Then you throw your meat into the hole and you bury it for a long time. This is left to cook for about 24 hours, during which the meat gets super soft and smoky. I'm sure my landlord would love me to dig a pit in the garden, but I was lazy so I'm cooking mine in the oven. I set it to 140 degrees celsius, then I placed the lamb in there and forgot about it for 6 hours. Now obviously this is not going to develop a smoky flavour, so I'd recommend using a smoker if you have one. There's also a little cheat where you drop a small piece of charcoal into oil to get a smoky flavour, but I'd rather not fill my house with smoke. When it was almost done, I made some lightly spiced basmati rice by frying some cardamom, bay leaves, cloves and cinnamon in a bit of oil until fragrant. Then I added 2 cups of triple washed basmati rice, 1.5 teaspoons of salt, and I poured in enough lamb stock to cover the rice by about 1.5 centimeters. I brought this all to a boil, then I covered the pot with a lid and let it cook on high until the water evaporated below the rice. At that point I turned the heat to its lowest setting and I let the rice steam with the lid on for 25 minutes until it was perfectly cooked. When the 6 hours were finally over, I pulled the lamb out of the oven and began unwrapping the layers of paper and banana leaves. You can see it's actually still really moist in there, thanks to all the layers of wrapping. Not only is the meat soft enough to poke a knife into it, but it's also soft enough for the handle of my knife to go right through. To plate this, simply make a bed of rice on a tray or a spare banana leaf. Then using a plate to support the ultra tender lamb, place the lamb leg on top of the rice and the meal is ready to be served. Although the spice rub looks a little dry, it's actually protecting all the juices in the meat. You can easily pull the bones out of the shoulder, then when you've got all three you can start shredding it with a couple of spoons. I got a little carried away doing this and ruined the aesthetics of the dish, but you can clearly see how juicy the meat really is. The spices are perfect for the amount of meat, and it is looking extremely tender. Now let's taste this. Alright, just to show you how tender this lamb really is, that you just pick it up and it just falls apart. This has been cooked for 6 hours total, so it is extremely tender. Alright, now let's get a bit of lamb with the rice. Mmm, oh, so good. Eating this lamb is such a unique experience because the flavours are so different from what you'd expect. The cooking mellowed out the spices and you'd end up with a lamb that isn't overwhelmingly spiced and has a slight tangy flavour. Obviously this is missing the smoke flavour you'd get from cooking this with charcoal, but it is insanely delicious regardless. I'd love to know what you think of it and if you tried anything remotely similar. Thank you for watching and a special thanks to our patrons for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the recipe, check out our Patreon and I'll be back soon with another recipe.